On this episode of Vandy's Auto Sport TV, let's see what happens when we add eight pounds of boost from a Pro Charger to a 1996 Firebird. Since we've already taken care of the suspension by installing a Hotchkiss TVS kit on our Project Firebird, we chose a Pro Charger to add some horsepower to this baby, so when we take it to the track, it's really going to fly. Now, to increase the horsepower on our Project Firebird, we've chosen to add boost. Now, what boost is, is it's positive pressure forcing more air into the engine than what it can ingest on its own. For example, our 350 cubic inch engine in our Firebird could take in 350 cubic inches of air per engine cycle. Now we're going to add positive pressure with a belt driven supercharger to force more air into the engine. Now the system we're going to be installing on our Project Firebird is an intercooled centrifugal supercharger. Now the best way to describe a centrifugal supercharger is to say that it is basically a gear driven, belt driven turbocharger. Now what happens is the belt spins this pulley here which turns an internal gear set which allows the impeller to spin much more quickly producing more air and more horsepower. Now how much horsepower are we expecting? Well, with our supercharger and intercooler at 8 pounds of boost, we're expecting a 50 to 60% increase in horsepower. Now that's not where this one ends. You can change the pulleys, add some more mods to your engine, and make a lot more power. All right, now let's make our baseline runs on our Project Firebird. Now our Project Firebird made an average of 273 horsepower on our Dynacom Dyno. Now if you want to know more about superchargers, you can check out our supercharger overview video and our Pro Charger video that we're going to install on our Project Firebird. Now let's get to that installation. Okay, first we're going to uninstall the air temperature sensor and remove the hoses from the air boot. Now this is the beginning where we're going to take off all of the, basically the air intake system. Now we're going to unplug the mass air meter and unscrew the boot and take this out of the way. Now we can continue to take off the mass air meter and the rest of the stock air box. Because our blower bracket mounts on the block where the ignition coil was currently mounted, we're going to have to remove it and relocate it in a later step. Open the petcock and drain the antifreeze into the bucket. Remember, this is toxic for animals, so you don't want to leave it laying around. Make sure you dispose of it properly if you're not going to reuse it. Then, remove the lower spoiler. Now remove the front sway bar. Also, we're going to need to remove the cruise control module from the frame rail and remove it from its bracket to be relocated to a new location. We're going to have to drill one hole to relocate the bracket. It reuses another hole up on the frame rail. Now the air pump on our Firebird is electric and mounted to the block. We're going to have to relocate this as well, along with cutting a bypass hose or a transfer hose from the passenger side to the driver's side. But first, let's get this pump out of the way. Now we need to cut the transfer tube from the passenger side to the driver's side for the smog pump. Okay, now we're going to install the air pump bracket. Now this is going to be kind of difficult and it's real hard to see. You actually have to go in from the inside of the fender well in order to get the bolt secured correctly. Once it's in place and bolted down securely, you can install the air pump in its new location. Now our electrical wires for our air pump are not nearly long enough, so we're going to need to add 12 to 18 inches of wire here. 
we're going to use our NSPA connectors in order to make a weather tight connection for our air pump. Now this is a very simple process. It's just a matter of cutting the wires, adding a length of wire, and then using the heat gun to close up our NSPA weather tight connectors. Once you're done extending the wires, you can use electrical tape to wrap the wires or get some split tubing to make it look like a factory installation. Now, since we relocated our air pump, we're going to need to make our lines that go from the transfer tube from the passenger side and driver side to the air pump in its new location. The tubing is provided by Procharger. Remember to leave the tubing a little long and cut it once it's in place. That way, you're sure you didn't make it too short. Now we reconnect to the passenger side. Use a hose clamp to secure the tube over the metal pipe. Now it's time to remove the cooling fans. Okay, now we're going to have to modify our cooling fans. Now, one of the things that we're going to do is basically this electric motor is going to be in the way. So we're going to put some standoffs between the, the actual casing itself and the electric motor. We're going to have to take off the fan blade. Now, one of the things about the fan blade is this is reverse thread. So it's very important if you try to tighten it up or if you try to loosen it up and think you're loosening it, you can actually break that bolt and, and ruin this fan. Then you'll have to buy another one. So what you want to do is just know that these are reverse threads. So instead of going the opposite direction to loosen it up, you're going to uh, kind of be like you're tightening it. Then the blade comes right off. Now we're going to take these bolts right here off. We're going to put these standoffs behind there and then raise that, in, that motor uh, away from the shroud. Then we're going to use the supplied screws to put it back in place. Now, as you can see on this, it has these teeth on here, and then there's the corresponding teeth on the fan. So it won't go down all the way. Don't force it. Just kind of wiggle it around until you get it to where it goes down. And then, of course, we're going to do just the opposite to put it back on with the reverse threads. All right. Now we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side. All right, now we're going to go ahead and install our supercharger bracket. Very simple process here. Just line up the holes. Now, there are two different size holes on here. So you want to put the big bolts, the 3 8 bolts, obviously in the 3 8 holes. Put those big ones in there to get them started. And then don't tighten anything down until you get all the bolts started, as always. All right, once we've got the bracket on, we're going to go ahead and torque these bolts down. Now, there's 3 8 bolts and there's 5 16 They both have different torque specs. So we're going to go ahead and torque our 3 8 bolts down to 38 foot-pounds. Ready? All right, now that we've got our supercharger bracket installed, we're going to go ahead and put our head unit on our Project Firebird. Now remove the three bolts that hold the balancer to the hub assembly. 
On the LT1, it has a two-piece assembly. So when you take the bolts off, make sure the surface area is perfectly flat and perfectly clean so that when you bolt the spacer on, there won't be any wobble once you tighten down the new blower pulley. Now it's time to install our 8-rib blower belt. Make sure that the tensioner is loose to make this job a little bit easier. Okay, now we can reinstall our front sway bar. All right, now we're to the intercooler installation, and it's going to be a lot easier to show you what we're going to do here than it is underneath the car. Now, when we ordered the kit, we ordered it with the standard intercooler, which we found out once we started to install it that it's going to sit a little low. We've actually put a Hotchkiss TVS kit uh, on our Project Firebird, and so it sits a lot lower than it did before, about an inch and a half. This is going to kind of get in the way, so we want to make sure that we don't tear off our intercooler or uh, have it pick up any debris. So what we've done is we've opted to go with an upgrade, which is the twin intercooler kit. Now this actually fits up in the fender well. It's going to give us a lot more ground clearance. Also, down the road, if we choose to upgrade the boost, these are going to support much more horsepower. All right, to install our intercooler assembly, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and remove the front bumper cover. Next, we need to modify the styrofoam. Now, this is the cushion that basically holds the bumper cover in place in front of the reinforcement bar. Save as much of this as you possibly can. Only cut what you absolutely have to. Now we need to mark, center punch, and drill our holes into the frame so that we can mount our side mount intercoolers under our Firebird. Now to mount the intercooler, it has two bolts that go to the frame, and then the outside of the intercooler also bolts to the frame with this bracket. It's very important to use the outside bracket. There's a lot of stress. Make sure you secure it tightly. Now you can see where our crossover tube comes from the passenger side intercooler to the driver side intercooler. Then it goes through this Y, and then from the Y up into the air intake pipe itself. Now here you can see the spaghetti factory that is the intercooler tubing. Here's a great shot of both intercoolers on either side, the Y pipe coming out of the discharge tube, and also the compressor bypass valve. In order to reinstall our air temperature sensor, we have to remove the sensor itself from the old housing. Procharger supplies a new housing for the sensor itself. Simply pop it out, put it into the new sensor housing, and it will screw into our new elbow that goes into the throttle body. Now this is kind of hard to see, but we have an air inlet tube that fits over top the inlet of the blower. It has a clamp on it. Slide it over the top and tighten it down. Next we're going to install the elbow that goes inside the inner fender where the air filter will be installed. Now install the elbow and the air filter. Now, onto the rear of the car. First, you're going to move the rear seat from the driver's side. Then, we're going to drill three holes after we've marked them with the bracket for our auxiliary fuel pump. We're going to go ahead and drop the three bolts down from the top. Next, we're going to remove the fuel line from our fuel filter. Now, remember, the fuel system is under significant pressure, so make sure you relieve that pressure with the Schrader valve up front before you remove the filter. It's not uncommon for quite a bit of fuel to leak out of the fuel line, so make sure you have a bucket handy. Now, we're going to install some isolators on the bolts that we drop down for the fuel pump. This is going to keep the fuel pump from making noise and transferring that sound into the passenger compartment. Next, we install the fuel pump with the bracket and tighten our bolts. Now we're going to install our wires on our fuel pump. 
Remember, this is a relay style fuel pump. So what you're going to do is you're going to have a signal wire, a hot wire that comes directly from the battery, and then a ground and a switched wire that will go into the relay. Since we want our auxiliary fuel pump to run any time the factory fuel pump is running, we're going to tie in to our factory fuel pump signal wire. Now we run our hot wire all the way to the front of the car to the positive battery post. Make sure you route it around anything that's hot or can create problems for electrical wires. Next we're going to install our FMU. Now FMU stands for Fuel Management Unit and what this does is as the engine sees positive pressure or boost it raises the pressure on the fuel injectors. How it does this is it stops the return of fuel back to the tank. The LT1 has a return style fuel system. So for every pound of boost that the intake manifold sees it raises the fuel pressure six pounds of pressure. This is how it adds extra fuel for boost on the LT1. Now we're going to connect our FMU to the fuel line itself. What we do here is disconnect the fuel line at the back of the fuel pressure regulator on the back of the fuel rail. Then we'll connect them together and this is going to add our extra fuel once we're under boost. Now we're going to go ahead and add the oil to our ProCharger head unit. Now the ProCharger oil is proprietary and it comes with four bottles. The first bottle is good for the first 500 miles. After that, you change the oil in your head unit every 6,000 miles. Also, ProCharger has a great little dipstick on there to make sure that the oil is not low. Now we're going to go ahead and tee into the vacuum system and this is required for both the FMU and the compressor bypass valve. What happens is when the compressor bypass valve sees a vacuum, it opens up and allows the excess boost to vent to atmosphere. On the FMU side, as it sees pressure, it increases the fuel pressure to cover the extra boost that the blower is making. Now it's time to connect the red wire that we brought up from our fuel pump relay. Remember, this goes directly to the hot side of the battery and should always be fused. Now it's time to reconnect the mass air meter and the vacuum source to our compressor bypass valve. Now thanks to ProCharger and 8 pounds of boost, we picked up over 55% more horsepower, going from an average of 270 horsepower before to over 415 horsepower afterwards, and there's still plenty of horsepower to be had once we make some future modifications. Check out the link below to see what we have available for your vehicle. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up for this video and hit that subscribe button. We hope you've learned something today, and we'll see you on another episode of Andy's Autosport TV.